Hey guys, Nikolai here. In today's video, we'll be taking a look back to a time when League of Legends players were at risk of having their entire internet connection disconnected just for playing the game. Specifically for being the best player in a ranked game against someone who would do anything to win. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Pro Guides. If you want to start Season 10 on the best leg possible and hit the highest rank you've ever reached, Pro Guides can help you. ProGuides.com offers everything you need to stay on top of your game. From up-to-date tier list, champion guides, and coaching from high elo players, among much more. You can log on to ProGuides today, select the coach, and start playing with a pro in no time. Click the first link in the description to get started. Now with that being said, let's jump into the video. Oh, that play. Like? Yeah, I DDoSed. Excellent. For sake, man! Fucking unreal. Well, that's two, so it's obvious now, isn't it? This is fucking absolutely ridiculous. What you just finished watching is the effect of being DDoSed. Specifically in that video, that's called a drop hack, which is a little different. It's actually knocking off all 10 players' connection to the game and makes it seem like that game never happened. However, a DDoS attack has the same effect, except it only targets one player. Because although a drop hack can prevent you from losing, it doesn't give the quote unquote hacker a victory. Whereas with the ability to DDoS, you can look at the enemy team, see who's doing the best, send out a DDoS attack their way, and they won't be able to reconnect for a while. And now with their carry AFK, the enemy team has no choice but to play the game 4v5, and most likely lose the game. But okay, let's back up. A lot. First, let's quickly get through what DDoS means for those who don't know. The acronym DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service. Basically, the perpetrator must have your IP address, which is the unique address of your internet connection, just to keep it simple. Once obtaining your IP address, they can perform a DDoS attack which essentially sends a ton of traffic to your connection, often from literally hundreds or thousands of different servers. This clogs up your internet connection and just flat out makes that connection useless. Which, by the way, is illegal. People have genuinely been arrested for doing this. But let's move forward. How does someone go about doing this? Well, quite simply, this isn't supposed to be easy. But one online service made this very easy. And that service was Skype. Here's how it goes. First, you need to already have a program or service that will actually send all that traffic to the connection you choose. Allegedly, these services cost a set amount of dollars per minute. For example, if the service price was $2 per minute, it would cost $60 to knock off a connection for 30 minutes. But okay, let's say you have access to the service. How are you going to get the enemy Teemo's IP address in the first place? That's where Skype comes in. The security of Skype pre-2015 was horrible. And with only a little bit of tech savviness, you could get the IP address of most Skype users. And once this became known, some hackermans on League of Legends started to use this to their advantage. When they would jump into the loading screen of a game, they would take every opponent's username and submit it into Skype to see if any users match. And most times they would, because most people will often just use the same username on all platforms if they can. So here's an example. Let's say they're playing against Teemo Lover 123 They'll take that name, submit it into Skype, and boom, they found a match. Then they take that Skype username and submit it into a third party site that easily gives them the user's IP address. And that's it. Now they play the game as normal, but if anything starts to go wrong, or if Teemo starts to pop off, Armed and ready. the hacker man can press a couple buttons and have Teemo completely removed from the game, with essentially zero consequence. Fun fact, I actually found a video from 2014 of popular streamer Greek God X having this happen to a player on his team. I specifically bring up this video because the accused DDoSer later threatens to DDoS another player. Also, it's a good example of the whole Skype thing I was talking about. Hi guys, I'm playing a game at the moment of League of Legends and I know Pantheon's getting DDoS by Cassiopeia. So basically, the reason she DDoS Pantheon is she's 8 and 3 and what she'll do, she'll go through all the names and check if they show up on Skype and then get your IP on Skype. 
and she'll DDoS them. The, the reason why I thought she was DDoSing him, because the way he disconnect... Let's see. I will DDoS you more singed. This needs to stop. This needs to stop. Otherwise, this game is not going to be fun anymore. Now, Greek was not the only one to complain about this. Endless posts were made on Reddit, this was a huge issue for streamers, and overall just a very bad time for the game. People were using this strategy to literally bring themselves up to Diamond and Challenger. Because not only was Skype making this easy to do, but Riot didn't really have a way to prove and ban said players for DDoSing. So, this went on. For a couple years. The problem was so bad that this eventually reached pro play. Prior to having a franchise system in the LCS, teams had to qualify for a spot in the LCS by participating in a separate tournament called the Challenger Series. And on August of 2015, a match was going on between Team Denial Esports and Team Dignitas. Let me give you some important context of this match. The winner of this would advance to the finals of the Challenger Series and the winner of the finals would get a slot in the EU LCS. Which is a big deal. A team in the LCS would make significantly more money and the players themselves would get proper salaries. But now that you know those details, here we are. On August 4th, 2015, Team Denial is currently on the winning side of a best out of three match against Dignitas. And right after Denial acquired their second dragon, the game was paused. The dragon away, and I believe we are in a pause yes. actually. As uh, as this game looks like we have had a connection issue. Yeah, on Kyrie. On Kyrie. So yeah. uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, get the game back. Hopefully it's only brief pause. Well, it wasn't a brief pause. Denial's jungler just got DDoSed. And due to the official rules of the Challenger series, if a team can't field all five of its players, it must forfeit the match. Another rule also states that a player would only receive 10 minutes to pause and resolve any technical difficulties. Reportedly, the player didn't just stay still and hope the issue would go away. He actually rushed to get on different computers. A report said he went to a different location and he still got DDoSed. He then ended up going to his sister's house and still was DDoSed. So yeah, on that day, Team Denial lost an important match due to a DDoS incident. And in case you're wondering, Team Dignitas would go on to win the tournament. And although solo queue players weren't banned, you may have heard that a pro player was actually banned for allegedly taking part in DDoSing. Popular pro player Jensen of Cloud9 and Team Liquid Today received a lifetime ban from pro play for his alleged behavior. Obviously today he's in the LCS and doing quite well, so the ban didn't actually last a lifetime. However, what I want to point out is that many people say that Jensen was a drop hacker or a frequent DDoSer, as if it's a 100% fact. But the truth is that he says he didn't do such things. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? The only real evidence that existed and was what Riot used is a post-game screenshot where you can see Jensen being rather toxic and allegedly giving away a player's location. To this he said that all he did was get the player's IP and his location, but he didn't actually knock off his internet. Obviously that's still a pretty lame thing to do, and it was enough for Riot to use him as an example. Now, eventually people did get more educated on the matter, and started to either not use Skype, or at the very least they didn't use their league name on Skype. Remember, most of this takes place between 2013 to 2015. Discord was nowhere to be seen at that time. And to make matters even worse, while this whole Skype situation was ongoing, some YouTube channels were literally trying to teach people how to do this. Hey guys. Uh, Aaron here today from Accelerated Bomb. Um, I'm gonna tell you this will tell you their IP and from here you can do whatever you want with it. DDoS, boot offline, whatever you want. Uh, this first one is something that I've actually had requested at me by some of my friends at school because I told them that I knew how to do this and this tutorial is going to be how to DDoS. 
Now flash forward to today and DDoS attacks are nowhere near as common, but they do still exist, especially the drop hacks we talked about earlier. Just a while back, popular streamer Nightblue3 was in a game where he was drop hacked in protest of him getting a Teemo player named Nubrak unfairly banned. I guess our game got DDoSed, huh? Red buff don't kill me, smite it bro! I just got DDoS. You see that? Yeah? What you doing? I got DDoS. Oh, we back, baby! We back! Sorry, plugged it back in. What the hell? He actually did Yeah. Isn't that crazy? He said, look, 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 he's gonna do it again. Look, look, look. He did it again. He said, lunchtime, be right, be right back, lunchtime. lunchtime. But with that being said, my name's Nikolai. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again very soon.